There we go. Good morning. How is everybody doing? Great. Busy weekend. That last weekend before Christmas. Busy, isn't it? Trying to get everything last minute done. I don't know what I was thinking. My wife talked me into going Christmas shopping. Last minute items. It wasn't too bad. But uh, it was bad enough. <laughs> I trust y'all have uh, all your plans in store and you're going to plan on a, on a merry and worshipful Christmas. And uh, that's my wish for you. Hey, a few quick announcements. If you got some, make, make your way forward. But I'm going to start us off a couple. Uh, one is, as Don Keezer's memorial service will be here next Saturday, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And uh, there will just be the cookies and coffee afterwards. Uh, so just a, just a quick reminder, uh, Don Keezer's funeral will be Saturday the 28th, uh, 10 a.m. here at the church. Okay? Go ahead. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder, we will have Christmas Eve program practice today during Sunday school. Um, as soon as the sanctuary clears, if everybody can gather down here to the, um, at the front, we'll get started because we need to get costumes too. I feel like we're kind of like running in 10 directions this year as far as trying to get everybody organized. So if you please could do that as soon as possible. The choir does need to stay. We'll practice and then um, you can go your merry way. But we need to have everybody here and assemble as soon as possible so we can get started. And then we will have program practice tomorrow at 7 o'clock with costumes. So please, um, if you can have the kids here ready to and dressed, ready to start practice at 7 o'clock, that would be awesome. <laughs> and then you can join us for Christmas Eve program and this awesome program at um, 5.30. All right. Another quick announcement is starting after the first of the year, I noticed something, and I feel really, really terrible about it, so I'm going to apologize to everybody for it. Uh, we, we have this tradition where we hand out uh, Christmas cards to everybody through our mail system with our, this year, our postman, postmaster general Mike, <laughs> and postmistress Tracy, and uh, <laughs> I thought postmistress Tracy was going to hand Postmaster Mikey's head this morning. Um, it, it, it is a bigger task than what people realize. Uh, but uh, but most people go through the, the church directory and and uh, make out the Christmas cards and and then they they pass them out. We've got a, a filing system back there. But not everybody. We've had a lot of folks come in since we've done our directory. Not everybody is in the church directory. And so if you didn't get a Christmas card this year, it's not that you're unloved or unappreciated. You, if you weren't in the directory, most people didn't probably get you a Christmas card. So we apologize. That's my fault, okay? And, uh, and so after the first of the year, we're going to, Dawn is going to be set up. Dawn Hett's going to be set up down there. Yeah, wave your and she's going to be updating our church directory. And what we do is she'll just ask you if she has a place where you stand, take your picture, and we get all your vital information, name, address, phone number. Huh? Yeah, yeah. We, well, let's get the blood pressure. But, uh, but the vital information that people need to, you know, uh, get to know one another, because... Uh, not everybody in the back knows everybody that sits up front. Not everybody that sits up front is they see and recognize faces, but they don't know their names. There you go, Joel. He waved at us. <laughs> so just to, just to let you know uh, that y'all, we love and appreciate everybody that's here. And if you didn't get a Christmas card, you come up afterwards. I'll give you a hug. But uh, uh, but we're just trying to, to update everything. And so after the first year, if you Don Het will be grabbing you and saying, "Hey, we need you to get your picture taken. We need your information so we can update our directory." And our directory is online at our website, 
our church website, www.onlychurch.com, and that has been updated, uh, so it's a whole new website, you might want to check that out. But uh, the directory, you can get on through there, set up just a password, username and password, there's no cost or anything, but it does allow security so that not everybody that gets on the church website can look up your name and address, okay? So we have that secure. If you can do that for us after the first year, if you're not in the directory, if you're not had your picture taken by Dawn, and you're, you, we just want to see your smiling face every single opportunity we can. Sometimes I just get on the church directory and look at people. Uh, so, uh, you, you, <laughs> I'm creeping the choir out. So. <laughs> Go ahead. No, nope, go ahead. Follow up. Yeah, okay. Well, we were talking about Karen. We just wanted to give a big thank you to Tammy and Jeff Williams because they were the postmasters for years and years and years, and they did such a fine job. They so did. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Good job. Uh, and one other thing, if you go on the app, you can use the app also to go to the only website and get on the church directory on your phone. So just wanted you guys to know. So, all right. Other announcements? Anything else? Christmas program is, you already said that, okay. <laughs> that had a long weekend. Easy. Birthdays. Somebody grew older. Got a couple of birthdays. Facebook, you can see their uh, wedding photo when they got married. That, that my wife, she she was showing it to me. It was good. It was good. Isn't it funny how you change the years? <laughs> All right. If there's no further announcements or no activities. Uh, let's prepare our hearts. We're going to have our prelude and our acolytes, and then uh, the Enzies are going to come and, and uh, do our Advent candle. Let's prepare our hearts for what God has for us today.
you'd stand, please, if you're able, and join me. Oh, I guess, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I'm sitting down. That's not the one thing that we're at. We've got the calisthenics going. In case you don't know us, I'm Larry Enzi, my wife Melanie, and we have two of our granddaughters, Paige and Avery. The Advent wreath is a circle with no beginning and no end. It is a symbol of endless love and faithfulness. Out of darkness, light shines, pointing us to the one who came to overcome the darkness of this world and to be our light in the world. Three weeks ago, we lit the prophecy candle and remembered those who first spoke the promise of the coming Christ child. Two weeks ago, we lit the Bethlehem candle, a symbol of preparations being made to receive and cradle the Christ child. Last week, we lit the shepherd's candle remembering the first in a long line of people who joyfully shared the good news of the Savior's birth. The fourth candle on the Advent wreath is called the Angel's Candle. It reminds us of the hope fulfilled in the first coming of our Savior and of our continuing hope as we anticipate His coming again. Scripture to Psalms 24, beginning in verse 7. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O gates. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The next is uh, New Testament Luke, chapter 2. I'm familiar with this story, and let's, we'll start in verse 7. And he gave birth to her firstborn, to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the, in the stables and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news and great joy which shall be to all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Isn't it interesting the three names they gave for Christ and the order in which they were given. It says, For today in the city of David there was born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Before we are saved, He is our Savior. To be saved, we must come to Christ. And after we have Christ in our hearts, we spend the rest of our lives making Him the Lord of our lives. Will you pray with me? Father, in the fullness of time, You send Your Son as promised through the prophets who look forward in hope. And You have given us a living hope by raising Him from the dead. Father, by the power of the Spirit who created the earth and everything in it, create in us pure hearts and renew in that within us steadfast spirits that permeate our lives. In these days before Christmas, Father, open our hearts to the wonders of the grace and the peace that come at Christmas. Amen. <laughs> Now let's try it again. Please stand. <laughs> 
called the worship responsibly this morning. We waited. And imagined the Savior. We imagined power. One like the world is stronger and on our side. We imagined a king on a white horse wielding a sword. We got a baby born in a stable among the livestock. We imagined the work done for us through the destruction of our enemies. We receive a baby who will teach us our calling to seek reconciliation and to love expansively. Praise be to God for the unexpected babe of Bethlehem. Praise to the wisdom of love. Amen. All right, let's do some singing. Good morning. Kevin, you need your glasses? Okay. Anyway, um, I'd like to, when I put the money up here in the, in the um, birthday cake, that was for Carol Hett for her birthday. So please wish her a happy birthday as well. Here we go. From Second Chronicles 7, 3. <clears throat> when all the Israelites saw the fire coming down and the glory of the Lord above the temple, they knelt on the pavement with their faces to the ground, and they worshiped and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, He is good. His love endures forever.
life. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. again this morning and uh, we just give you thanks for all that you are, all, all that uh, you have done for us. Father, as uh, Larry said this morning, may you, we not just look at you merely as our Savior, but we continue to strive to making you the Lord of our life. Father, help us to surrender our will to yours. May we seek you daily. May we uh, just look for your guidance in all that we do and all that we say. Father, as we worship you this morning again, may our, uh, may our voices rise in unison to you into the heavenly, heavenly realm and join with the angels in their mighty choruses as they proclaim your mighty name once again today. Just bless us all as we worship together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, kids want to come up? We have a children's story. Christmas trees. 
Well, bells have been around since way before Jesus was even born. Maybe not necessarily jingle bells, but bells have been around since before Jesus was even born. That's a long time. We see bells in all kinds of different places. <clears throat> Did you know that St. Patrick, you know how we have St. Patrick's Day and we were green? He was one of them that actually started the tradition of ringing bells in a village so that people would come out and they, then he would tell them all about Jesus. Who knew that he was important kind of to what Christmas is also? Um, sometimes bells were used in the olden days and they would put them on carriages and they'd put them on sleighs and they would ring as they went through um, for a couple of reasons. One was, you better stay out of the way, you're going to get run over, okay? Because they couldn't slow a sleigh down very fast when the horse was pulling it. And it also, it also was so that you could um, let people know someone important was coming to town. Do you heard the sleigh bell that made something important, someone important was coming? Do you guys ever hear a bell before we start church every Sunday? Why do you yeah. think we ring that big old giant it's bell? It's about to start. It's about to start. And what do we learn about when we come here? Jesus. Yeah, about Jesus. There's lots of times we use bells, churches use bells to signify when someone important is coming, which here that means Jesus is coming to join us, right, for the morning? Well, I got to thinking, <clears throat> what if each of us was like a bell? How could we be like a bell, like a jingle bell? Can you hear it? What's inside of there that makes the noise? A little ball's in there. What if that little ball was like the spirit of Jesus inside of us, and we were the bell? So when we ask Jesus into our heart, he comes in, and he helps us to make that joyful noise. Okay, what are ways that we could make a joyful noise for Jesus? Any ideas besides just ringing a bell? After we ring the bell and we have people come to us, how can we tell them about Jesus? Pray with them. Sing. Yep, in the mornings. Yep, that's probably a joyful noise to Jesus. Well, for most of us singing. I don't know about myself, but okay. What about when we leave church? What about then? What could you do? What could you do this week? Actually, the next couple of days before Christmas Eve service, what could you do? Tell people about God? Could you invite them to come to church, to our Christmas Eve program? Because when we, as individuals, praise Jesus, it sounds like this, and that's pretty. But what if, what if the whole church, what if all of us got together to praise Jesus and talk about Jesus? It would sound something a little more like... I get it. Like this. What about when we all work together to talk about God and Jesus? That sounds even better, doesn't it? How does that not make you happy, right? Okay. And I think when we do that, that's kind of like what God hears up in heaven. He hears the merry jingles. Okay. So if you guys this week, actually you only have a couple days left, invite somebody to come to Christmas Eve service, even... Better would be somebody who you know does not ever go to church. Okay, invite them to come to Christmas Eve service so they can learn about Jesus too. Can you guys do that? All right. You won't be here. Well, you could. Maybe yeah, but maybe then the next Sunday you could invite them. Right? It doesn't just have to be on Christmas Eve. All right. All right. So I have a Bible verse for you. It says in the Bible that we are supposed to share God's word. It says in Mark, Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay? So that's our chore. That's what we need to do. And if you want to take jingle bells first and ring them, you can, right? And then maybe you'll get their attention and then you can tell them about Jesus. All right. Can you guys fold your hands and bow your heads so we can pray? Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day that you brought all these young people out today. And, and I am thankful for their parents and grandparents who bring them. And Lord, I just pray that as we go through this next couple of days with all the excitement of Christmas, that we remember the real reason we have Christmas, and that's because you sent your son for us. 
Lord, I just pray that we will um, take that joy that we have and spread that to others, especially the non-believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Got to go see Dan for your candy. All right, and that's you. Dan gets done there. The infants through four years of age can go down to the nursery through these doors over here, and they have children's church kindergarten through fifth grade this way. as we stop to worship you now with our, our tithes and our offerings. Uh, Lord, this morning again, I'm um, reminded that you, you just love it when we give to you cheerfully. You gave so cheerfully to us, and we return that to you today. So we ask that you bless this gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. share some joys and concerns. And Father, we thank you so much for your presence in our life. We ask that you would help us to be mindful of the fact that your word says that two things, you'll never leave us. And you'll never forsake us in the situations we find ourselves in. Lord, I pray and ask that you would help us to truly be thankful this Christmas season. 
not just for the fact that we commemorate and remember your first coming. You are no longer a babe in a manger. Lord, you are present in our life today. You are alive and well and active. And there's not a day that goes by that your watchful eye does not see what's going on in our lives. And there is not a moment that your hand is not busy working on our behalf because you love us. Lord, I pray and ask that you would just keep us mindful of that. Lord, I pray and ask that you would just be with each of the requests that have been made here. We think of Lois. Lord, we pray and ask that you would minister to her body. That you would uh, just stretch forth your hand and touch her physical heart. Lord, I pray and ask that you would stretch forth your hand as well and minister to her spirit. Lord, may she know that one, she's loved by her family and friends. And Lord, that there are those who are interceding for her even now. May your Holy Spirit communicate that to her. And I, I just pray and ask you give the doctors wisdom. Lord, we lift Andy before you and we ask that as he's recovering from his surgery, Lord, even though he's home, that all may go well. Lord, uh, we just pray and ask that you would, you would just minister recovery healing for him. We pray that for Gordon, Sue Peterson. Lord, we pray and ask that you would help them to recover after their surgeries as well. They would just take it easy and have patience and allow the body to heal. But more importantly, Lord, that you would minister to their spirits and encourage them. Lord, there's not a circumstance that misses your eye, and we pray and ask that you would minister to Verna and Jeannie in the midst of their trials, Lord, we pray and ask that you would make a way for them, speak to their lives, speak to their situation, Lord. We think of Daryl, Lord, he's been battling cancer, and, and uh, the battle's not gone well for him. We pray and ask that you would uh, just minister to his spirit, and then, Lord, we ask, too, that you would minister to his body as well. And as this young man's going in for knee surgery, we pray and ask that you be with him as well. Let everything go well. Give the doctors uh, wisdom. Help them to perform the very best of their ability that he may, uh, may experience uh, relief from his pain. Lord, for each one here, I pray and ask your blessing upon them. Draw close to us. Oftentimes, the devil tries to discourage us. There is not a moment that the enemy and his cohorts are not trying to bring chaos and doubt and crisis into the, into the lives of those who follow after you. We are in a war, but we put on your armor. We stand in your power and might, not our own. And we pray and ask that you would help us to look back over 2019 in the next week and a half and just praise you for your hand of intervention, your hand of blessing, and Lord, your hand of protection and guidance. We pray and ask that you would bless us in 2020. Lord, we pray and ask that you would walk with us, that you would draw near to us each and every day. And more importantly, that we would have a hunger to draw near to you and become what you created us to be for your purpose and for your kingdom. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness to us. Now we pray and ask that you would keep us mindful of the words that we pray as we Pray the prayer you taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time, we'll have the choir minister to us through song.
Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the, whole, the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And all God's people said, Amen. Interesting uh, passage. I've preached it now for 32, almost 33 years. And uh, always something new jumps out. Even in the reading of it, something new jumps out. So uh, I trust that, uh, that you never tire of opening and studying God's Word and reading it. But I uh, want to look, title of my message, Unfailing Love and Patience. And when we read this passage, we are immediately struck, I don't know uh, about you, but uh, as of late, especially with our study in Revelation, there is a lot of angelic activity in the Scriptures that sometimes we just overlook. We just kind of read it and we don't think about that. But here, imagine... Uh, you ladies, uh, at probably the age of 12 is what historians kind of put Mary at. That was uh, between 12 and, and 13, 14 years old. Uh, that young woman, that was the age that they could get married. Uh, young men at the age of 12 were considered the jump, that was a step into manhood. Can you imagine, I, at 12 years old, I was not a man, trust me. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> My grandson Vance. Are you there, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> but things were different. The times were different. The world was different. And uh, as a young girl, imagine, ladies, uh, you having that kind of visit in the middle of the night uh, where the Lord... Uh, sends an angel to speak to you. Uh, certainly, I don't think it probably carries the, the, the real weight of her response. Uh, it says uh, when the angel appeared, uh, she was troubled. Uh, I, think, I think that is a pretty light description, uh, but it doesn't go as well when, if it would have said that she ran screaming through the house. Uh, that probably didn't... didn't uh, translate as well and flow as poetically as this does. But uh, the angel shows up 
And I want to focus on this. He says, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And of course, then she says, uh, the scriptures tell us when she saw him, she was troubled. And considered that manner of greeting. Uh, why did she wonder? It says that, that word consider means she thought about that, that greeting. That Why did the angel greet her that way? Highly favored one. Mary knew herself. She knew. Uh, and, and contrary, I know, to uh, what uh, some theologies teach, uh, Mary uh, was no different than the rest of us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is that when God looks at you and me, He looks at us with favor. <clears throat> He doesn't look at you and, and see all that you and I see and think about ourselves. He looks at us and He sees His creation. He looks at us and He sees the potential that we have. He looks at us and sees a reflection of His image. Because what's the scriptures tell us? We are created what? Not that we our visage looks like him, thank he's probably very thankful that he doesn't look like this. But he is placed within us as his creation. A part of who he is, that ability he created us like him. Him, the ability to think, the ability to love, the ability to choose. Not that the whole world responds to God the way He sees us, but God sees every creative being. He sees us with favor. He said, now hold it, Pastor Jeff, you get kind of weird on us here. <clears throat> Understand this. There are no perfect people. There are. There are no perfect churches. There are no perfect pastors. They're just people struggling to make it through this life. But God has found favor. Has put favor. He sees us with His favor. So we, when the angel speaks to Mary here, imagine God speaking to you because that's the message that He carries to you today. You and I are are favored, highly favored by God. How do I know? Because of this. God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, a lot of times we, we miss what God is really wanting to do and trying to do. We miss the fact that we, we think that life just goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And, and, and in fact, uh, if you read on, uh, or if you, excuse me, go back and read uh, the first part of Luke 1, you'll read the encounter when an angel appears to a man by the name of Zechariah, and he says, Zechariah, you and your wife are going to have a son and he is going to have within him the spirit of Elijah. And he is going to preach repentance to the world. And he is going to, he's going to be the forerunner of the Messiah and the Savior that is to come. And Zechariah's response is like many of our responses would be. Hold it. Do all. Oh. 
Some of you say, well, I would never say that. Give me a break. That's only one excuse for doubting or rejecting God's proclamation for your life. For some, it would be, I'm too busy. I ain't got time for that. Others would say, why me? I'm not smart enough, handsome enough. So I have no college education. We make up all kinds of excuses to doubt what God wants to do in our life. This, for Zachariah, happened to be his age. Oh, yeah, I can't have a kid. Now here's a guy who ministers, and, 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 and he is a minister of the Lord in, and for the people of God in his day. Had he not remembered a man by the name of Abraham and a woman by the name of Sarah, who when the angel uh, proclaimed that they would have a son, and that he would be the father, that Abraham would be the father of many nations. Remember Sarah listening, and she giggled. Ha! That's the best I can do on a woman's lap, I'm sorry. <laughs> she, she laughed. And then the angel heard her and said, You doubt. But when the boy is born, his name will be called Isaac. What's Isaac mean? Laughter. Every time, after Isaac was born, every time she called him in for dinner as a little boy, Isaac! Isaac! Come on, it's time to eat! She probably had a smile on her face. Oh, gosh. Here I am in my 90s, calling a little boy in for dinner. My son. <laughs> Was I an idiot for doubting God? Absolutely, Sarah. You and I doubt Him all the time, too, even though He makes proclamations in our life every day through His Word. And so when we read this about Mary and the angel showing up, and she, the angel says, Listen, you are highly favored among women. We can, we can take that scriptural principle there. You are highly favored, ladies, among women today as well. Men, we are highly favored among men. Why? Because our heart seeks after God. That is what drew God to Mary in the first place. Too often, we go our own way, we want God in our life, we expect God to show up when we're in crisis, but every other time, just leave us to drive this thing called life. And so God is, un He has unfailing love. Even in the midst of our doubt, He has unfailing love for us, and He has unfailing patience. Even in the midst of doubt. Even when I, he knew she was considering the question. I don't know how long this encounter took place, but she had enough time to say, I'm thinking about that greeting. Why would he say that to me? Maybe Gabriel pulled up a chair. I don't know if they had chairs in that day. I didn't. But maybe he sat in the corner and said, just take a moment and think about that, Mary. Just think about it. I'm here whenever you're ready to discuss this. I don't know. But Scripture tells us she considered that greeting. Why? Because Mary knew her. She knew her life. When we read on, he, he understands her apprehension. And then he says this. He says, don't be afraid, Mary. Or you have found favor with God. And you are going to conceive a child. That child, he didn't tell her all this. 
will die for the sins of the world. You'll watch him die a bloody death on the cross that is not his. You will hear your son scream out in anguish as nails are driven through his wrist and his feet. It's funny, isn't it? These little ones come into our life and, and we hold them. I don't know about the rest of you, but I kind of look at them. You know, you kind of, I like to feel their ears when they're, they're just so pliable. It's like, you know, I feel mine, feel theirs. You look at their little itty bitty digits on their, their little fingers, on, and you, I play with them, and you look closely at their fingernails. It's just amazing. That God, and people say, how can you say that we are favored, highly favored by God? Because He has allowed us to co-create with Him. He's allowed us that privilege. It's amazing. And when people say, well, you know, the world's not that bad of a place. You hold that little child in your hand. You look at them. Especially when they're asleep, they look so peaceful. And if you just, I always do this, you just rub the corner of their cheek like that, and they bring up a smile. You ever done that? Just lightly rub them and they, while they're sleeping. I do the same thing with my dog. <laughs> I torture her while she sleeps too. Yeah, I told you there's no perfect pastor. I'm not him. <coughs> we said, well, the world's not that bad. Look at that. Yet, we live in a society that condones the killing of those babies in the mother's womb. And we say that's woman's health. Anyway, we're back to the story and what's going on here. The thing I want you to walk away from with this, this Sunday is that Mary is just like the rest of us. I know that we get taught different things, a lot of different things, but I'm not saying she was bad, or evil. There is evil people in this world. But Mary is like us today. She had a heart that searched for God. She wanted to do right. She was obviously uh, a spiritual girl whose heart hungered to know God more. There were probably other young women in the same situation but God picked one and He picked Mary. And He said, Mary, you're going to have this child and this is the Messiah. And while in the back of her mind, Mary knew what the Messiah was all about, she never thought that He would come kicking and screaming into this world through her. And you know, there are people who still need to encounter the Savior, Jesus Christ, today. You meet them every day. And He wants you to introduce them to Him. Just like Mary, you and I are the vessels that carry the risen Savior with us. We are highly favored among people.
And God is patient with all of our foibles. But to draw it out to an end, Mary embraces what the angel tells her. Let me ask you this. Have you really embraced have you really embraced what God has called you to not only to be but to do in your life? 2020 2020 is a new opportunity for you and I to carry the message of the Messiah, the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, to those who He looks upon with favor as well. Jesus didn't come just to die for you and me. He came to die for all the world. Paul, Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy and he says, I would that all God would that all men be saved. All men be saved. God looks on his creation and he wants to save it. That's a pretty good message. Now will they all be saved? I got to be a spoiler on this. No. Some of you are thinking, Pastor, how are you going to tie in Revelation chapter 10? That's where we're at. There are these interludes in Scripture. There are. If you read Revelation chapter 10, the first part of it, that is an interlude. You had the woes. Remember the woes? We've been looking at the woes. You had the woes, and all of a sudden, there is a point in which that all stops. And in Revelation chapter 10 and verse 1, uh, I still I saw another mighty angel. There's a lot of angelic activity in Scripture that we just kind of overlook. Coming down from heaven clothed in a, in a, with a cloud and a rainbow on his head and a face shining like the sun and his feet were pillars of fire. Now there are some theologians who believe that this is a picture of Christ. But in Revelations, there's always a distinction between Christ and angels. And this is specifically referred to as an angel in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the pre-incarnate Christ the pre-incarnate Jesus, it is the, he's known as the angel of the Lord. And, uh, and so, uh, a little bit different. But real quickly, you're saying, how are you going to tie this thing in here? Let me tell you this. There are some interludes. And this is an in, this, in Luke chapter 1, the message today that I presented to you is the response of God after a 400-year interlude where he was silent. <coughs> And you know what? When God, when, when we perceive as God being silent, when we perceive that God isn't at work, all of a sudden He shows up and boom! Things change. And it happens like that. We think, well, 33 years took place between His birth and His death. 33 years is but a blink of an eye in eternity. That was fast. But you had this 400 period after the book of Malachi, last book in the, in the Old Testament, you have a 400 year period where there is no prophet, there is no uh, uh, voice for God. And everybody does, the, the, I imagine the, the community, uh, the Israelites, the Jews, whatever you want to refer to them as, they probably all went to the synagogue every Sunday, heard the reading of the scripture, and uh, probably said, I wish he would hurry up and get done so that we can go and watch the chariot races. Uh, 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 it was probably something along that same line. We just kind of got into this groove. And 400 years, and they heard the reading of the prophets, and they said, uh, soon uh, a Savior will come, and he will take away the sins of the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've heard that before. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, just get on with it, preacher. Come on, get on with it, Rabbi. Get it, get it, get it going. we got, we got things to do, places to go, people to see. 
And they got into this rut where they did not expect God to move. And then God all of a sudden shows up in the bedroom of a young woman and says, you are highly favored among men because I'm going to deliver to you. God is going to deliver to you a baby. And this baby is Christ the Messiah. He is the Messiah. He is Jesus. And He will take away the sins of the world. That's a heavy thing to, to come on in one night. And all of a sudden, what was 400 years of silence, God is now on the move. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing over the plains, you know. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, we sing the whole thing. God is on the move. And I tell you what, we celebrate and we commemorate the first coming of Jesus Christ at Christmas. But I tell you this this morning, you better begin to anticipate, you better begin to celebrate, you better begin to allow it to resonate the fact that the second coming of Jesus Christ is just around the corner. If you may think that God has forgotten about everything, you may think that this is an interlude that He's just going to let float on forever. But the reality of it is, is that God is on the move. And in Revelations chapter 10, he shows John some things that even John is not allowed to write down and describe. What I'm saying to you today is, is the unfailing love of God, even in the midst of the book of Revelations, chapter 9, the plagues, the catastrophes, all the woes. But what's it say? Third of mankind dies because of the plagues. Third of mankind dies because of uh, 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 natural disasters. The waters go sour. Everything is going bad. But then there's that pause. And you have to read that last verse, last couple of verses in Revelation chapter 9. And it says this, And those of mankind who remained did not repent. God's unfailing patience with us amazes me. When He could have said, Shh, We'll just, we'll, we'll just erase these guys and I'll just start over. But that's not God. That's you and me. That's the way we think. God sees that image that He's placed within us and He's not going to let it fail. Here's a great, great Christmas song. We don't sing it enough. You know what it's called? Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones, to Him belong. We are weak. He is strong. That's a great Christmas song right there. We don't think of it as a Christmas song. Listen, we're no longer worshiping a babe in a manger. Just give you a heads up. We're going to sing away in a manger. He's not in a manger anymore. He's not in a cold, dark grave anymore. Jesus is alive and well. Tell everyone you see. Tell them for me. Jesus is alive and well. We don't depend on the president or Congress or Senate. We don't depend on the mayor. Our dependence and reliance is on He who created the world. 
stand with me. Love this song, Way in a Manger. I do. There have been times when I've sang it away from the manger. Because we're, we're not there anymore. Listen, Christmas is to remember what Christ did in the first coming. It is also to help us anticipate His second coming. And He is coming soon, folks. Coming very soon. Let's sing this. song ends. Take us to heaven. Come Lord Jesus, come. I'm sure that that is the sentiment that was spoke so many years ago in that period of silence that we perceived. You were silent, God. They were probably saying, come Messiah, come. And you did. You didn't come the way they expected, but you came. And you changed the world in which we live in now. Lord, I pray and ask that you would help us to never forget, to look and to anticipate your coming. Come. Take us to heaven. But in the meantime, Lord, help us to be, as Tina said, the sounding of the bells, the clarion of your great message of love, unfailing love, unfailing patience with a world that would reject you. Lord, with a world that would take this time and twist it into something else, that would try to weave a new story, help us to preserve and to share the old, old story that never gets old. Lord, we thank You for Your love, Your grace, Your mercy, Your patience, and Your forgiveness. Help us to forgive others as You have forgiven us. Help us to love others as You love us. Help us to be patient with others as You're patient with us. And Lord, we thank You that we are highly favored among men mankind. Lord, help us to show and reveal your favor to those around us. In Christ's name, amen. Turn to somebody and wish them a very Merry Christmas.